สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. So today I'm going to share with you a recipe that I've been working on for quite some time. I'm really excited to finally have an awesome version to share with you. That is gyoza or pot stickers or dumplings or whatever you want to call them. But today the recipe is going to lean Japanese, so we're going to call them gyoza. So if you think that Gyoza or pot stickers is just a bunch of pork with vegetables and seasonings. Stick it into wrappers and you're done. No, 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 no. Today I've got secrets. I've got secret technique, secret ingredients to share with you to make sure that these are going to be the best dumplings you ever had. All right, let's get started. So first we're going to start on the filling, which is really the only thing we can start on because the only thing we're making because we're not making wrappers today. Yeah, spoiler alert, we're not making a wrapper today. Okay, so I'm going to start with a herb paste or spice paste rather with lots and lots of white peppercorns. I'm going to get that ground up, garlic, and ginger. And just a tip on the ginger: you do not need to peel the ginger. Some people like to peel ginger, but when you're smashing it and putting it in something like gyoza filling, no one's going to see the peel. Just put it in. Of course, you can just finely grate the garlic and the ginger as well. But I'm Thai, and just a mortar and pestle is just how we roll. Okay. There you go. So you want quite a fine paste, just like that. No big chunks. So secret number one is dealing with vegetables. Now, some people like to use regular cabbage. I actually prefer Napa cabbage, which is more tender and is a milder flavor, and I think it's easier to work with in general. But my secret is going to be how I prep with it. So the first thing you want to do: cut this and separate the thick stems from the leaves. Okay. And the reason why we're gonna do it this way is because we're gonna wilt down the vegetables so that it will fit nicely into our filling, and the stems and the leaves take different amount of time to wilt down. You want to cut these finer than you think, just juliennes, okay? And then after that, fine dice, smaller than you think. Okay, and then we want to keep the stems and the leaves separated. Now, for the leaves, I just line them up like this, and then you just go sort of, you know, ribbons, thin ribbons. Once you get to the firmer part, you can be a bit thinner. I like to just run my knife through it one more time to make sure there's no long stringy pieces, and I like to run it the opposite direction of what we just did. Woohoo! Go crazy! So the second vegetable we're going to add is garlic chives, also known as nira in Japanese or gui chai in Thai or gao choy in Cantonese. For some reason, I just know garlic chives in so many languages. <laughs> Um, the only thing about these, we're going to remove the root end because the root end can be quite chunky. And again, chunkiness is not something that we want. If you want to save these, you can just finely dice it, throw it into omelets or stir fries or whatever. Um, but you want to only use the part where the leaves are flat. Okay. So here's the real secret of this recipe: is we're going to actually cook the cabbage with the herb paste, which most dumpling recipes will not have you do. Um, in order to wilt down the cabbage, some recipes will have you salt the cabbage, massage it, and then squeeze all the water out of it, or they have you blanch it in to some boiling water and then juice, squeeze all the juice out of it. But I thought, you know what? Cabbage and vegetables have a lot of really nice flavor, sweetness, not to mention nutrients. If you squeeze all the water out of it, you just end up with flavorless fiber. Why not just sauté it and then take that opportunity to sauté our garlic and ginger and develop flavor even more? And turns out this, I mean, this really does the trick. Makes a much more flavorful filling. And I'm going to give a shout out to Lisa Lin. I'll link to her Instagram below. She's like the queen of dumplings, and I got this technique from her. I'm going to go in with the garlic, ginger, and peppercorn paste. So you can imagine that normally, if you just add raw garlic and ginger into your pork, it's only going to get minimally cooked when you steam the dumplings, right? But now we're really sautéing it, and we all know that sautéing garlic and ginger really develops that flavor. And I just got the heat on medium low because you don't want to burn the garlic. Perfect. Okay, so once this has had a couple of minutes, you're smelling really good. You might even start to see a little bit of golden developing in the garlic. We're gonna add the cabbage stems. Yes, and this is why we separate the stems and the leaves because the stems are gonna take quite a bit longer to wilt down. And to help that wilt down even more, I'm gonna add some salt. And the salt is gonna draw out water from the cabbage 
and so it will wilt down more quickly. And we're gonna give this maybe like four or five minutes. So that's looking good to me. I can double check by tasting for crunchiness. Okay, that's good. Now I'm gonna add <coughs> pepper, the leaves, which at this point will only take just a couple of minutes because again, the leaves cook down so quickly. Okay, so now that is looking good. I'm going to just turn this off and just leave this sitting here on a pan so that it can dry while it cools. And then, you know, while we wait, we have other things that we got to do anyway. So you want, again, maximum evaporation. Secret number two, we've got the vegetable secret. This is the pork secret. The pork secret is you do not want to use lean ground pork. If you use something lean, there, no matter what you do, your filling is gonna feel a little bit dry, a little bit rough, right? But if you've got fatty pork, that is a secret to juicy, juicy filling. I mean, you're halfway to winning if you start with fatty ground pork. If you do one secret from today, this is the one right here, okay? So we're gonna season this with some soy sauce some toasted sesame oil, and a little bit of sugar. It's not gonna end up tasting sweet, but that slight sweetness will balance everything. You want it, trust me. Now, more secret ingredients. Tapioca starch. So this is my other secret for keeping things juicy. Some fillings will not have you put any starch in it, but the problem is when you cook meat, Juices come out, right? We've all seen that. We stick a burger patty on the pan, a lot of liquid comes out. This starch, adding just a little bit, and you can use corn starch, potato starch, totally fine, will help keep that moisture in so that it's not all coming out of the pork. My last secret is for extra umami. This is like the thing that's unique to me, I think, is to add dashi powder. So this is hondashi or dashi powder, and it's basically the Japanese base soup stock that they use in a lot of different things. Like their miso soup, they use dashi as the base, and most people just use the dashi powder the same way you would use like bouillon cube or the better than bouillon chicken broth paste thingy, right? So the Japanese use this and it's got lots of umami, a little bit of a smoky flavor. And this right here really takes this up to the next level. If you're not gonna use it for whatever reason, you will need to add a little bit more salt. Um, so we'll just taste and adjust. Technique secret number five, you want to knead this a lot. So not just mix, 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 it's done and you're done. You wanna knead it to really until it goes from sort of like this chunky coarse paste into something quite smooth. That's developing the protein that's in here which will make for a slightly bouncier texture. I talk about this a lot in my meatballs, my Asian meatball episode where we really wanna process the heck out of those meats because that's part of what's gonna make a nice bouncy texture. So I like to give this about five minutes of kneading and you'll start to see the texture looking a little bit different and hopefully you use gloves that is your size and not trying to wear someone else's latex gloves that's way too big for you. Here is texture that we're going for. You notice that it's a lot sort of stickier, pastier than it was going in. Okay, so that's what we want. And now we're just gonna mix in all the vegetables. So that includes the garlic chives, the vegetables, which make sure um, has cooled enough so that it's, you know, lukewarm a little bit is okay, but you definitely don't want this to cook this pork. Room temp would be better. And do not make the mistake of adding all the vegetables in in the beginning because then by the time you're done kneading the pork, you get vegetable paste. So at this point, you're just gonna mix it so that it's mixed. You don't need to knead. By the way, for food safety reasons, if you're gonna make the filling and maybe like let it sit in the fridge for a while and you're not gonna cook it just yet, you wanna make sure that it's cool, 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 okay? Because if you add something lukewarm to meat, it really shortens the shelf life of raw meat significantly. But if you're gonna like make it, cook it, then it's okay. Okay, so now that that's well mixed, what we wanna do, and you wanna do this every single time, is taste it. Not raw like this. <laughs> Um, you want to cook just a little bit of it in the microwave or you can pan fry like a little patty or something just so you know where the seasoning is at because once, you know, there's no fixing it, right? Once you've made it into a dumpling, so I'm just going to put a little bit in a bowl, microwave it for literally 
30 seconds at the most, just until it's cooked through, and we'll see what it tastes like. So here's our cooked filling, and I just want to point out something. Notice how we have very little, if like any at all, liquid pooling at the bottom of the bowl. And that is because we added that cornstarch or tapioca starch. If you didn't add that, when you cook the filling, you will notice more liquid coming out of it. And that's why our filling is going to be extra juicy. Oh, it's perfect. Hot, but it's perfect. No need to wrap, just eat like that. Just make patties. Wrapping time, my favorite part. Just want to quickly touch on dumpling wrappers. This is probably something that's going to be like a local brand because it's a fresh product. So just pick something. If it works, great. If it doesn't, pick a different brand next time. Just don't get wonton fillings, uh, wonton wrappers. That's different. If you get those, you'll end up making wontons instead and not gyoza, okay? So I'm going to show you a few different ways ranging from lazy to having way too much time on your hands. So with the lazy way is no pleats. Not only do you get to do no pleats, you get to do only water on one half of the wrapper. And then with the filling, I like to use a standard coffee spoon, you know, like tea dessert coffee spoon, and then just plop it on. And then super easy, you just pinch the middle to seal. If you've got filling trying to escape, make sure you just kind of push them inside a little bit and then just squeeze and squeeze and bend it as you do it. So it has this crescent shape that gyoza is supposed to have. There you go. It's not the prettiest, but you know what? It works and it's fast. Okay, so if you have a little bit more time on your hands, you might want to start pleating. And with pleating, I do find that uh, if you wet the whole sheet, it will help the pleats stay together better because the pleats kind of have to fold on top of itself. The more pleats you do, the less filling you need because you sort of need that extra room for the pleats. Pinch the top. You just pleat. I like to pleat towards the center. You can do this a million different ways. And if you're feeling hardcore, you can do four on each side. When you pleat, you're just going to get a natural sort of crescent shape. So you don't have to like with the no pleated one, you kind of have to bend it. But if you pleat, it'll just naturally develop this cute shape. Now, if you don't have that much time on your hands, you can do two pleats on each side, one pleat on each side, three pleats on each side, just depending on how dedicated are you? If you've got hungry children who's gonna like devour this in five minutes, just don't even bother. So let's say I wanted to do only three. One, two, three, and then one, two, three. So I'm going to go and make more dumplings. A final tip, you either want to cook these or you want to freeze these, okay? You do not want to make them, stick it in the fridge, cook them tomorrow because this dough is raw and eventually the filling, the moisture from the filling will turn the dough soggy. So if you're not going to eat them all right now, cook them all within like a couple of hours, you want to freeze them, freeze them in one layer so don't, they don't stick to each other as well. Cooking time. We're going to do the standard crispy bottom method, which means we actually fry and then steam. Okay, so I got a big skillet here. Um, you want nonstick if possible. It will make it a lot easier for you. You don't have to actually wait for the oil to get hot. You just go in and line these up neatly. If you wait till the oil gets hot, then this part you're like, ah, ah because it's going to be spattering and then they're browning so fast. So just take your time. These will be okay. Couple in the middle. And then I'm going to wait for these to start sizzling and browning about three to four minutes, depending on your heat. Checking every so often how the browning is coming along, because in my experience, they brown a lot faster than you think. <laughs> Oh, by the way, if you've got frozen ones, you just do exactly the same way. You cook them directly from frozen. You don't need to thaw it. It'll just take you a little bit longer to steam them. That's all. Ah. Maybe I turn the heat on. No, then we're just asking for trouble. Asking for trouble. <laughs> I'm going to live on the edge and turn the heat up a bit more. Okay, that's starting to look nice. See that? A little. Okay, I'm gonna go in now. It's gonna be a little uneven just because most pans are. Now you got about a quarter cup of water. Okay. 
turn the heat down a bit. <laughs> That's a little more aggressive than I would recommend. But <laughs> maybe turn the heat down before you add your water. But that's what you do. You add your water, you cover it. Most of the time, it's not going to be that aggressive. That's as aggressive as, as I've ever seen it. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't do this at my house. And then you're going to let this steam if it's not... What's going on here? If it's um, not frozen, it will take about three minutes. If it's frozen, I would do up to five minutes to make sure the filling is completely cooked. And to check doneness, you can just go by timing. But to be absolutely sure, I like to use a instant read thermometer and you can just stick it in and you want to go for 160 at the very least, which these are definitely. So they're done. And then what you want to do now is if you've got any lingering water, you want to cook it so that the water all dries up. Yeah, see? So easy. For plating, if you want, you can just put them on a plate and be done with it. But to show the nice golden brown bottom, you might want to try something a little riskier and flip it out onto a plate, which is what I am going to do. So, okay. You ready? One, two, three. Hup. It's a little risky, a little scary at first, but if you've got a plate that actually fits these properly, they'll sit a little bit nicer. But I'm going to go and rearrange them a bit. Yay! All right, let's eat. Dipping sauce. So this recipe, I've made the filling flavorful enough that you can actually enjoy it without any dipping sauce. But I think a little bit of vinegary dipping sauce is nice, a nice balance to sort of the salty filling. So it's a really simple sauce. You just want soy sauce in here. Use good quality soy sauce if you've got some. And then equal parts rice vinegar. You want the filling to be tart. If you were in Thailand, you'd probably want to add just a pinch of sugar because we always like a little bit of sweetness to balance but you don't have to. I don't feel like it needs it. What I will add is some chili oil. So this is um, my secret number six or whatever. I've lost track of how many secrets now. This is my other secret is I like to add to my dipping sauce some uh, Rayu, and you can just drizzle it onto the gyoza. You can serve it on the side, but I like to actually just put it into the dipping sauce. Okay, let's eat. I want to try one first without any dipping sauce. So good. Juicy filling, perfectly seasoned. And you can really taste the hondashi and the sesame oil, the garlic, ginger. I mean, you can really taste all the extra spices and seasoning that we add to here. Now, a dip. Mm. <gasps> Even better. And I find that that doing the vegetables this way, the sauteing instead of the wringing out all the life out of the vegetables, you can actually taste the Napa cabbage flavor in here, which is nice and sweet, and it gives a little bit more complexity to an otherwise, you know, just pork filling, right? So it really does make a difference when you go through that little saute step. So the recipe, as always, will be on hotthaikitchen.com. And if you want to share with me photos of something that you've made from the show, you can tag me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And a special thanks to our Patreon members who help support the show. And if you want to know how to become a Patreon member with access to bonus content, check out the link in the description below. Thank you, as always, for watching. And I will see you next time for your next delicious adventure. <laughs>